Hey guys, this is Eric Weingunner with Weingunner Racing. Today's video is about the difference in between the AFR 227 race port competition port and a more heavily hand ported AFR 227 race port. I'll show you full numbers of some other differences as we go along and just pretty much give you more information. AFR always puts out a good product. And before I begin, I should probably mention too, I am an AFR dealer. So um, I'm also a Brodix dealer and several other dealers. So you might sound like I'm biased one way or another, but I sell every head almost. So, but I, I just want to, you know, give that disclosure first. So anyway, let's start off with this. This is the AFR 227 race port. Now, typically on most of the AFR heads, the difference between the race port and the competition port is the fact of um, the steps that they have here. Let me explain. Since they're CNC ported, what they have is they have a bird that just goes around in a circle and then it makes a step, and then it makes another one. How far away that step is creates the smoother or rougher uh, texture that's in this port. And it, and a lot of the other ones, the competition port, the step is much tighter, so it's much smoother. It also follows the contour of whatever port got digitized much better. That's how a lot of them are. For instance, if you got the AFR small block Chevy 220 head, the competition and race port, the design is exactly the same, it's just the CNC finish is smoother on the competition one. However, on this one, it's not, and you're about to see. So this one's the race port. So it's supposed to have the less smooth finish, which it does, and you'll see in a second. But I want you to pay close attention to this vein. Now, if you notice, it's almost straight. It's kind of angled slightly this way, okay? This is the competition one. You see those, and I don't know what that is. You notice how this is curved off this way? This is how most of theirs are. If you get an AFR 227, that vein is all curved that way. That's a real style towards an LS. Does the LS heads typically have a vein that faces that way as well. Um, this one's that way. So you could also tell by the finish. Oh, my camera. Sorry if my light wasn't so bright. But you can hardly see any steps at all. I'm trying to get it where the light won't blind it. But it's mostly because it's a smoother finish. Let's look at the exhaust. I'm have, no, can't do that. Anyway, that hopefully that gives you a better idea. It's just smoother throughout the whole thing. Both of them have the same size valve, 210, 210. I'm going to switch lights, actually. That's way you can see better. I'm going to attempt to switch lights. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now you can see it better, hopefully. You can barely see the difference that you have on the finish. So it's it's finer for sure. That's why it looks that way. Okay. The exhaust port's the same way. Its design's actually the same. So this exhaust port looks exactly like this one. The only difference is that one's a smoother finish. The chambers for the record. Now ignore this. I've done a valve job on this one. This is not how it looks when you get it. I'm getting ready to port this one. It's, this is the match for the one that's up on the flow bench. The chambers themselves look pretty smooth either one but that finish looks like almost identical so really it's just in the intake port the reason why it makes it cheaper of course is because it takes um more time to do the smoother finish than it does the rougher finish but this design is different than that one so what's interesting about it is i am curious usually this vein facing this way flows more but it's more like a trick so i don't know that it makes more power However, I am curious because on this flow bench, I've got the swirl meter. And it's going to tell me how much swirl is in the port. That's the air turning around the bore. I am curious to know if this vein will affect it. Because I'll be flowing both of these stock. Um, which, that sucks. I already forgot. I already didn't do this. I can't flow this one stock because I forgot I didn't do it on the swirl meter. But I'll be flowing this one. And that one's already been flowed. But I'll be flowing this one with the swirl meter attached stock just to see what it'll do. See how if it changes things. I'll compare it to the ported one here. And you just have to live with it. I can't do this one. I've already modified the valve job. Because I just remembered today when I was looking up on the computer that I had flowed it on the super flow. But it didn't have the um, swirl meter attached when I did it. So it didn't couldn't record swirl. So you won't get swirl numbers for the out of the box race port. You will for the ported one and for this. And I'll give you flow numbers to go with it as well. This would be somewhat entertaining. Um, so anyway, 
let me uh, let me get to uh, flowing all the rest of the heads and we'll see what happens. Here are the results of the AFR test. So, um, and I'll show you. This cylinder one right here is the AFR race port 227. This one right here, cylinder two, is the AFR uh, 227 competition port. Now, this one was flown on the Sanyaz. Both of them were flown on the Sanyaz, so same bench, just to get an idea. What you see here is a difference in flow numbers. And you could tell there's some spots where it's lower, but for the most part, especially up here, it's so much better. Look, it moves 333 CFM at uh, 900 lift. Why am I bringing this up? And why am I telling you this? Because that head right there, you look at this thing, um, is the highest flowing out of the box AFR small block Chevy head I've had on my bench. And I'm going to show you results just to prove it. Nothing has beat it um, as far as out of the box. Now, if you're wondering, well, how's this compared to the one you ported? Because so far, that's a race port. That's the competition port. Well, what about when you, this one? This right here is the ported race port. So I've already ported it. Um, I won't go through too many details because it's, if I told you to do this, like what I did, there's a fairly good chance if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to hit water. So I don't want you to do that. Not that I'm trying to keep secrets. It's more like, don't hit water. Here's what mine did. And this is what's kind of strange. So let's uh, hold on a second. I'll just pause the video. Okay, this should give you a better view. So this one that's all ported, which is the race port that I ported, its final flow numbers are right here. And this is from the Sanyas as well. This is what it was stock, which by the way is that number right here. So if I compare the 227, if you look at them, uh, let's do 400, 256 to uh, 259. How about 600, which should be that one, 312 to a 305. But look at this, at 900, 333, I was a 327. My peak was a 329. Now mine keeps climbing the whole way this one backs up, see what I mean? At one inch is 327 compared to mine, which is 329, because mine keeps climbing. This one backs up, as you could tell. This is the reason why we keep flowing the one inch. And the reason for that is because it's telling me that the port's not stable. That's why it's backing up in flow. It means the air is jumping the short side, and that's the reason why the flow is backing up. However, this is really, really good. Now the exhaust, we'll just, we'll ignore the exhaust. The numbers are there in case you want to look. So that was stock and that's, that's after, of course. And those are those. And by the way, there's a slight improvement still with the competition versus the race port and the exhaust. Anyway, we'll focus really on the intake ports. The numbers are so well, like I, beyond what anything I've seen. I, long time ago, and I mean, it's been many, 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 many years, I flowed an AFR race port or competition port, and it went like 309. It did not do 333. When I say this is the highest one I've seen, it is the highest one I've seen. The major difference is this wing. You see this little wing here? When I looked at the swirl numbers from the Superflow, I'm, to give it, I'm going to give you the Superflow numbers, that wing slows swirl down. So if it's not spinning as much, then you've got more coming out. So in other words, if the air is turning, it's actually blocking part of the um, air coming out one part of the valve or slowing it down enough where it flows less. So if you reduce swirl with this, you get the idea. That may be part of the reason for it having it in there. The race port doesn't have that way. So it's not like I ground it this way straight. This is how it comes. Like if you look at the beginning of the video, see it's straight. So I just made it thinner because I made things bigger. Anyway, um, there's that, but I cannot begin to tell you how much, how good this has is out of the box. It, it really is a ringer because none of the others I've had have done that. And just, I just want to show you what I mean. So let's go through some other numbers and we'll get to what exactly what I'm talking about. Put this here. Let me grab that one. Okay. This is from the Superflow, and this is that race port one. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. But if I compare it to the competition port from the Superflow bench, so this is the different flow bench. So this is the Superflow I'm flowing them on. So these are both these heads on the Superflow bench. That's this one, this one's this one. 
So if you look at the competition one, again, it's really close. This is the AFR competition. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. And this is the race port ported. And you look how much, how close they are. Now, granted, mine is better, but it, uh, but the peak, it's sure not. I mean, that went 340 CFM on the um, Superflow bench. Superflow wrench retire, by the way. Um, but that that's a phenomenal number. I mean, really phenomenal. This one didn't do that. So, I mean, the lower numbers, of course, are better. I'm just showing you. And even that one, it's better as well. But there's some spots definitely where the competition one is, is better. And, I mean, it's really better. Really better. So, I'm going to go back one page because I want to show you this. So, again, uh, not that one. Nope. This one. We're going to hold on to this page right here because I want to show you how much how good this 227 is. So here's my next thing I want to show you. Okay. Sorry about the moving stuff. This that you're looking at is an AFR 235 on the Sanyez bench. This is what the AFR 235 did. So it's bigger than the 227. It's a competition one. Two, two 125 valve bigger on the same bore size, same bench. This is its numbers. Again, that's this one, this 227 right here. Look how much better it is. It's phenomenal better. 305 at six, it was this one. 311, so yeah, that's better. But like you look at this 900 number, is 323, 333. That's the highest by far. You're like, okay, well, that's a 235. You got the 245? Yeah, I do. Here's a 245. This is 245 stock. We look at, uh, let's say, 600, 312, 305. All right, right, right. Let's look at nine. 333, 327. And look at this one, 320, 327. This one's outflowing every 235 head I've had on the bench, as far as peak flow numbers go. Um, and every 245 ahead on this bench. Both of those heads, typically the AFR 245 flows 330, 329 to 331, right in that range. It's, yeah, I've never had one go higher. This, maybe it's a special one from this machine that came off of, because they've got several CNC machines. But whatever, this one is your ringer. So uh, this guy got a lucky one. But anyway. There's your numbers. Thought I'd share them with you. It's very good. I would like to apply the same stuff I did on this head to this one, but this one's just getting valve springs changed. I'm not doing any port work. But um, I would like to see, because this one probably would break into the, I mean, it's probably would hit the 340 on the um, Sanya's bench and probably pretty close to 350 on the Superflow. However, that's all flow numbers, to be quite honest with you. And I, I really wish I had a dyno, because of all the things I want to test would be this. Have an engine, like a 421, put these on, make some pulls, switch and put these on. Because I guarantee this is going to be at least 20 or 30 horsepower better than that. You're like, why? The flow numbers aren't that different. Because flow numbers aren't everything. I just give you that information. Because that's the easiest to give. What I didn't say is, this has a bigger push rod pinch will allow you to spin up the higher RPM, even if it doesn't flow like 3 CFM less than that. So yeah, that one flows it. But I can also tell you from the flow bench, the part I didn't do was recording it. This thing's got some velocity issues so fast, that's why it's backing up. This one's gonna peak, say, at 7,000. This one will peak like at 68. Um, that's because the port velocity too fast will not do it. You could add more camshaft to kill some other things to help it get there, but you get the idea. I think that head is gonna make more power. I have no doubt in my mind on that matter. The flow bench numbers doesn't do that, but that's one of those things where there's other variables that make power besides just flow. But if I had a dyno, I'd test it. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're looking for an AFR head, that 227 competition ports look pretty good. However, even though the 235 and 245 don't flow as much at peak, they're also going to beat this thing. Just saying. Because it's only flow bench numbers. The 235 has a bigger push rod pinch, bigger intake valve. It's going to make more power. This just helps it. Like if you compare this, however, I will say, let's say you've got two heads, the competition port, this one. And the race port, not modified by me. Uh, the competition one, it's probably up 20 horsepower over that race port. Because um, they're the same dimensions almost inside. Of course, there's some differences because of the vein. 
but the added airflow and able to do it, this one's at least 20 horsepower better. A few have said on my FR220s, where the port design's the same, except for it's just smoother finish, I bet you there isn't a five horsepower difference. This one with a different design, I, I think that one's actually worth some power. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care.